In this video, we will talk about how to issue stock. Why would a company want to issue stock? A company may choose to issue stock because they want cash or capital. For example, they may want to extend their business or they may need extra cash. So they can issue stock, which gives away ownership to the investors. And in exchange for that ownership, they receive cash and they don't have to repay. Okay, so when we issue stock, we're going to show, we're going to do a journal entry to show that we received cash and that we gave away some of our ownership. Now this is called paid in capital because this is the type of capital we got um, from our investors. Okay, let's look at our new accounts that we have. We have common stock. This is a capital account and capital accounts always have a normal credit balance. And now let's look at how to calculate this. So to calculate this, you're going to take the number of shares times par. Now for preferred stock, it is capital also, so it would have a normal credit balance. And we are going to do this the same way. We're going to take the number of shares times your par. Paying capital in excess of par is also a capital account with a normal credit balance, but it is the amount that you got that was over the par value. So for common stock, if you had your number of shares times your par value, that would go into common stock. If you got any amount above that par value, you're going to put it into paid in excess of par common stock. Okay, so let's look at this. This is some given information we'll refer to. But on March 1st, we issued 220,000 shares of common stock at par for cash. Okay, so in this example, what we issue the common stock for and the amount of cash we receive are going to be exactly the same because we issued it at the par value. So we don't have to worry about the paid in capital in excess of par account, uh, any leftover for this example. So if we get cash, cash is going to go up and cash is an asset. Assets go up with a debit. So we will debit cash. So we issued 220,000 shares at par. The par value for common stock is $10. So we're going to debit cash for 220,000 times um, your $10. So there is our debit, $2,200,000. And then we're going to credit common stock for the same amount. And that's all we have to do in this one because we did not receive more money than the par value. In the next one, we're going to issue stock, but instead of receiving cash, we're going to get land, building, and equipment. Equipment. So it works the same, but instead of debiting cash, we're going to debit each of these assets. And then we're going to credit our stock. So we receive land, buildings, and equipment, and we record these at their fair market value. So to calculate our common stock, we issued 70000 And... Let's find our par value of our common stock. Our par value is $10. Now our balancing entry is going to be a credit to the capital, paid in capital in excess of par account. So over here I've added my land, building, and equipment up and the fair market value totals $875,000. So the total amount that I got was $875,000. So the par value is $700,000 so I received more than par. The amount above par would be the difference which is $175,000. And a lot of times, instead of writing out paid in capital, you'll see it being written as pick in excess of par. And always double check and make sure that your total debits equal your total credits and that both 
the debits and the credits equal 875, so my journal entry is in balance. So that is how you issue stock in excess of par, and instead of receiving cash, we got assets. Or should I say assets other than cash? All right, let's look at the last example. Issued 18,000 shares of preferred stock at $110 cash. We'll assume it's March 31st and we're going to get cash. And to calculate the amount of cash, we said that 18,000 times 110. Now let's see how we calculate preferred stock. So if we look back up here, it is always the number of shares times your par. So we issued 18,000 shares, and if we look to see, par value uh, is $100 for preferred. So 18,000. times 100. So that is our credit to preferred stock. Now you can see that we got more cash than the par value, so the remainder has to go to your paid in capital in excess of par. So credit paid in capital in excess of par, and you can just do the difference in your debit and your credit. So 180,000 would go into paid in capital in excess of par. Then always make sure your debits equal your credits. This would add up to 1980000 which is the same as the debit, 1980000 So this is how you record the issuance of stock. So there's also what we call no par stock. If you have that, your entry would be just cash, your debit, and your credit. It would look like this. You wouldn't have paid in capital in excess of par because there is no par. You will see those as well when you work problems. Please let me know if you have any questions.